Welcome to the On-Premise IT Podcast, the only show that dares to be both on topic or on premise, and sometimes even on location or on premises. Each time we meet, we bring together a group of IT luminaries to discuss a single idea or premise. On today's episode, we're discussing Edge and the fact that it looks awful familiar if you've been involved in cloud and data center, but kind of isn't. Before we get to that premise, though, let's meet who's on the panel today. Hello, everyone. I'm Enrico Signoretti. I am an IT analyst and I work for Gigaum. And you can find my write ups on gigaum.com. Hi, my name is Allison Klein. I am the chief analyst for the Tech Arena, and you can find my content at thetecharena.net. I'm Alistair Cook, and I'm also an analyst, and I write some of the reports for Enrico. And I spend a lot of my time teaching people how to use uh, cloud technologies, particularly AWS cloud technologies. And I'm Stephen Foskett, organizer of Tech Field Day and publisher of Gestalt IT. You can find me on the socials as S. Foskett. And of course, you can find me on the Gestalt IT podcast and news series. So those of us who've been in the industry for a long time have seen the technology, the impact of technologies like uh, virtualization, uh, cloud orchestration, uh, containerization, all of these things have impacted the data center, uh, of course, the cloud, but also the edge. And it would be easy to take a look at what's going on in edge computing and to say, well, that's just the same stuff. It's just uh, this. It's just a data center. It's just a, a data center without the data center. Or maybe you look at it and say it's a cloud without the cloud, right? Um, but that's the interesting thing, isn't it? it? It's not the same thing. It is, in fact, a pretty big divergence from what we've seen in the data center. So let's get us started. Enrico, um, you've seen a lot of uh, data center infrastructure. I'm sure that you see a resemblance here, but it's not the same thing, is it? I, th I think we are in the first wave of adoption of Edge as we think about Edge. I mean, Edge uh, uh, started with the you know with the first computer here. I mean, the, the first computer that was distant from the data center was Edge already. But actually, now we have a lot of technologies and a, a lot of new options. And uh, and there are new deployment models. There are new technologies surfacing, and uh, I'm I'm pretty curious to see how many of these vendors that are many of them are not yet even you know in um, available to the public. I mean, we're talking about stale company trying to use all these resources at the edge that sometimes are, are underutilized, and they can really build really fancy things. I mean, distributed storage, we talked about this in um, uh, in my reports, but also in, uh, you know, in the community multiple times, there are uh, plenty of options to use compute at the edge that we are so only scratching the surface. And, uh, and you know, potentially, th there are new computer models that we, we don't uh, even uh, take advantage of. So, it's an extension somehow of the data center and the cloud, but actually it's totally different things. So totally that that will bring new opportunities to enterprises and you know organization or every kind. I think it's it's important to not view edge as just being a single thing. Um, I, I had a, a conversation with also Tech Field Day delegate Charles Anise um, on our internal uh, communications and, and wrote a post about how there are very different edge platforms and I've tended to categorize a near edge and a far edge and the near edge looks like a data center. It probably doesn't belong to the person who owns the computers in it, so it'll be some sort of point of presence for a telco or something like that, uh, but it has data center infrastructure and it, and it runs a general purpose platform. The thing that I think is really interesting at Edge is, is what I categorize as Fire Edge. So it's a location that's not a data center. It's a, a, a location that belongs to the owner of the computer. So maybe it, it's a delivery truck is one of the examples I've, I've heard of, is that there's a whole bunch of uh, sensors and, and telemetry equipment in there. And that generation of data means it's got to be pro processed locally. And so there's a, a much more special purpose platform goes into these smaller locations, be they are retail premises, uh, attached to a manufacturing plant, attached to a wind turbine. Uh, and and the, the data that's generated has to be processed locally because it's not worth sending the whole lot back to some central location. 
it's very driven by the applications that are running there. It might be that it's in a retail premises, so there's a lot of uh, surveillance video and um, you know, stock tracking applications that are running there. Um, that's quite different to the general purpose platform that we see more at the near edge and in, into the data center and cloud. I think that when we look at edge, we need to think about why does it exist and really what is creating this need for a new computing model is trying to bring compute closer to where data is being originated. So all of those sensors and Alistair's example need some analysis and, and probably need it faster than um, could be done or even um, maybe not even tenable to do um, to bring that data into a cloud, into a data center and, and deliver um, analysis there. That opens up a, a host of opportunities um, to deliver innovative um, business practices uh, for companies if they can actually exploit that data with edge. And I, I see a lot of the fire edge as, as being, you know, it's a data refinery, essentially. Uh, the idea that they're pulling all that data over a, a relatively slow and a, and a huge number of, of network connections. So increasing the bandwidth is incredibly expensive. So you do the processing locally and you, know, you, you both, you get a real time insight from the local processing and that might be you know, a Tesla. <laughs> you don't want to go back to the cloud to decide whether the thing in front of the camera is a pedestrian or not. You need that answer very fast. And, and you think of that, you know, earlier today I was with, with a storage vendor and they are planning to release a, a new product that is a federated storage. So they are, they are you know, collecting storage resources uh, across a large network of very small devices and they are building something out of it. And on top of it, there is a second, you know, product on the roadmap that includes, you know, Lambda functions. So every time you interact with the storage, you also run function, which is a totally federated kind of cloud. It's a new generation of cloud. I mean, we can use the federated edge or federated cloud. I don't know the word that you can use now, but, but actually it's impressive. I mean, every, every time you are at the edge, you can use all these resources that are available there to do minor operations or major operations without going to, the, to, the, to a central location at the same time this data become you know available to everybody in the in the federation which is massive there are you know plenty of applications that that uh, that are possible that are now require a lot of resources at the core and the core could be the data center or or or, uh, or, or the cloud again but we are really changing the model so it, it, this is really the first implementation of the edge that we are seeing and and even when we see Kubernetes at the edge, we, we are really at the beginning. So the, the, there are a lot of now distribution that think about edge deployment. So very tiny, very optimized with, you know, very opinionated also on the component that uh, you deploy just, just to solve the problem. We are now starting to see, you know, mechanisms to manage this huge uh, number of deployments in parallel. And now the next step is, you know, really taking advantage of all these resources. You know how people used to say uh, the cloud is just someone else's computer? Um, it, it's true, of course, and the edge is just someone else's computer too. Um, all the things that we're describing are things that uh, do exist elsewhere. But as, as you're saying, it's, the interesting thing is how they're being used. And so, for example, with Kubernetes at the edge, we're not seeing... Uh, Kubernetes being used so much as a way to uh, continually manage and operate an environment. We're seeing it more as an abstraction or an, almost an API for an infrastructure stack and for deploying uh, lightweight applications in sort of a cattle sort of way. So the, the theory, the philosophy has been adopted and adapted in a new environment. And the same thing is true whether you're talking about HCI technology or, as Enrico mentioned, uh, distributed storage technology. Their companies have been working on this stuff for a long, long time, but the way that it's being used at the edge is really different, and it transforms the technology, in my opinion. Am I wrong? Completely agree. One of the interesting things to see is that transition that we have seen. 
Uh, and we're seeing scale computing tomorrow to see their huge transition. They went from running uh, individual discrete clusters of hyperconverged compute for a single customer. And they've completely turned the company around towards managing vast numbers of small compute clusters. And so there's, they're transitioning towards, you know, they're very much playing in that edge space. And the kind of things that I'm looking forward to in, in there is, is the, there's a whole lot of automation for deployment of the infrastructure on site with, with Edge. And you're not sending this, this with a technician, you're sending this equipment to site with an, a, a courier. Um, one of the, the Edge vendors I've talked to says that the courier should, driver should be able to commission it. The other one said that the pizza chef, because uh, like Enrico in, in Italy, uh, pizza is an important part of your life. Um, so the pizza chef should be able to deploy the infrastructure. It's a completely different way of thinking than sending, saying even we'll send a junior engineer with the tip. Uh, you just can't afford to do this at this massive scale and the, the huge number of deployments. So although a lot of the technology looks the same, as, as Stephen's been saying, the, the way it's used, the, the details of how it's implemented are very different because of that massive number of small units of compute you have. I think that there's also this notion of, you know, some of the core premises of cloud computing are what make Edge possible. So Alistair's talking about automation, a core premise of cloud, but the failover um, aspects of cloud where if a server goes down in a data center, you just move over to another instance and you're up and running and there's no problem. You may not have that capability at the edge, um, especially at the far edge where you're not going to be deploying redundant um, infrastructure on that, that truck, just to keep using that example. And, and I think that's where we have divergence. We have um, some core capabilities that are absolutely consistent and some core architectures that are absolutely consistent, but because of the environments, and maybe there are some other reasons, but the thing that comes to my mind is because of the environments, the technologies diverge. Yeah. Uh, one thing that, uh, you know, um, is really important is also to, to understand is that uh, um, Edge enables to use different type of technologies. I mean, e even though there is this rise of ARM uh, processors in the, in, the, um, in the data centers now, because, you know, cloud providers are using them heavily now, you see more and more ARM also at the edge. And, uh, you know, for, for different reasons, of course, one is power consumption, but actually, you know, you, you have all the same tools that you have on x86 platform, so why not? And this also brings accelerators, et cetera, et cetera, because you're looking at efficiency. So, yeah, so on one end, uh, it's different, but actually, uh, you know, I, I saw multiple times very tiny clusters, fully redundant, and, uh, and they work perfectly. I mean, you can go there with an hammer, break one of the servers, the, the rest, you know, works perfectly and so so yes and no i mean you have you have this architecture that are designed specifically for the edge but you know the level of uh, redundancy the, the level of uh, you know performance also are striking sometimes it's incredible because we are adding accelerators and and there are spe specialized arm chipsets that have you know GPUs that are really powerful because you want to do image recognition, you want to do you know AI stuff at the edge now. So and, and there is a lot of development and and you want to do it with an efficiency that is not you know the efficiency that you usually have at, in the enterprise data center. So it's uh, uh, there are some really interesting uh, use cases. This week at Edgefield Day we will see a lot of stuff. But if you think that, for example, at the Mobile World Congress that is also next week or this week, I don't remember. But anyway, so I'm receiving a lot of news and everybody talks Edge. Everybody talks about, you know, optimizing stuff for the Edge going there. I mean, it's a, I, I remember, you know, MWC as a, a consumer thing in the end. So presenting the new uh the latest phone but actually everybody's talking about enterprise application at the very far edge how you use you know 5g deployments optimized 
uh, operating system optimized for edge application and, and so on. It's, uh, I mean, it's a totally different uh, scenario now. I think that's a really good point, Enrico. And I think that if you look at where we started, which is, you know, is edge cloud, is it different than cloud? Network could be argued to be cloud. You know, I think the the lines have blurred and MWC certainly reflects that focus on private 5G networks. And and I'm I'm looking forward to hearing um, what folks are saying about that at MWC. Um, because it's you know a multi-billion dollar business that's about to hockey stick on us as part of that foundation for the edge. Um, I, I think that when you when you consider that, where do you see the lines when you're working with with clients on what they're defining as an edge workload? and what they're defining as a data center workload. Are there lines in it anymore? Well, I think I think there are lines, but it really depends on, on, on the type of, you know, application and and, and user. And uh, I had this experience with, uh, with uh, a very, very, what I consider very far edge. I mean, so cluster of very small computers installed, um, you know, next to welding machines. With, with all the problems that you can think about. So they are controlling the welding machine, they are recording data, you know, the environment is not uh, safe. I mean, from, uh, you know, you don't want to stay close to these machines while they are, you know, welding. And it's, uh, and there is also, you know, gases and other stuff, but they, they have this, you know, this stuff and this, this is core for this application, to, for this company. I mean, and, you know, this is the very far edge, and then they have what is you know close to the data center. I mean, so a collection point because we are talking about dozens of these stations, each one of them with you know some computing stuff, and th and then they have the the core where they do you know all, all the analytics and so I mean it's crazy and it's uh, it really depends on the application. It really depends on. Uh, uh, the edge is full of nuances, I think, and uh, uh, even when you talk with uh, with a vendor all the time, you have to ask what kind of edge you are talking about, and uh, you know, trying to remove the marketing from from the reality most of the time. And I think circling back to Alison's point that this should all be driven by the business requirement. What are we actually doing for the business? Uh, having an edge solution isn't going to do in itself anything if it's not aligned to what the business needs to achieve and and so the the lines that we as analysts like to put around this is edge this is far edge this is near edge are far less important than what are we doing for the business how are we actually delivering more value than we're we're, we're causing cost in this business how do we enable the business to do things that are going to serve customers better and and for the the worst of all words maximize shareholder um was it maximize shareholder returns or value or whatever the the, uh, the executive phrasing is for that one? Um, but it does come back to that, right? We're in this for business to serve um, the business to, to improve the business and deliver better outcomes for our customers. And these lines don't necessarily help us, but as humans, we like to have some ways of categorizing what we see and to be able to communicate that. That's why words matters and um, words matter and definitions matter. But in the end, we've got to be serving an actual purpose. And it is a very different environment. And I think that it has very different requirements by default because of some of the fundamental natures of, of the environment. I mean, one of the constraints that is placed, I mean, we're talking about constraints here and, and what the customer needs are. One of the constraints that's placed on edge computing, of course, is cost. You cannot afford to build out a micro data center and send it out to every restaurant or every warehouse or every school. Um, it, it just isn't gonna happen. Um, that pulls along requirements. Another one of them is, as you mentioned earlier, is uh, the, the availability of hands-on resources. So things have to be very plug and play. Another one, as uh, Allison mentioned, was networking and con connectivity. Um, you know, it, it's very different to pr provision something over in, in an internet data center with high availability, high performance, always on, unmetered 
uh, network links than it is to provision something at the other end of a potentially unreliable uh, link, or maybe just uh, something that's reliable, but maybe not um, you know, quite as predictable. Uh, all of these things go into what makes edge different. And in terms of definitions, um, to me, it really is sort of an I, I, I'll know it when I see it kind of definition in that the, you know, you could argue that a small manufacturing company with a real small IT infrastructure, maybe they're using NUX, maybe they're using hyperconverged infrastructure, uh, you know, scale computing, right? I mean, a lot of their customers are using, have, have uh, a network of just a few um, small PCs uh, that are running on a little switch and so on. And, and that's their data center, right? Maybe it's in a closet. Sounds a little bit like Edge, doesn't it? But it's not. It's not Edge if it's not used as Edge, right? It's not a, if it's not, it doesn't have that, that unique nature. And I think that for us who are trying to get our heads around it, uh, one of the things that's challenging as well is that that nature has changed over time. And so what was acceptable or required, satellite links, um, big, you know, heavy duty power supplies and UPSs and all that stuff, some of this stuff is no longer required or no longer acceptable, no longer, um, you know, and, and so we have to think about that as well. And so all of these things kind of come together to give us a, a, a sort of a de facto edge, despite what we want it to be. Um, what, what do you think of the constraints and, and how that uh, sort of pushes the infrastructure uh, direction? Uh, the further we get away from cloud and, and data center, the more we're seeing very specialist physical constraints. So as en Enrico mentioned, the, the machine that is right next to the welding station, well, that's going to have some very specific constraints around power and connectivity because of the environment it's in. And similarly, the, the computer that you've put inside the delivery truck is going to have a lot of constraints. It can't run on mains power. You're probably just going to rely on the battery in the actual truck to provide protection for it. And as Alison said, you're not going to have that thing redundant you, you, because you're only going to lose one person's productivity if it fails. So it's not worth spending the money for, for building a full three-way redundant cluster with um, geo-replication to another location. That that's clearly would be crazy. So the further away from the data center, the more use case specific constraints you're going to see and then you multiply that by the number of these locations there are as Enrico said there'd be a dozen uh, or several dozen welding machines in a single factory and there may well be 30 or 40 factories and so you've got hundreds of these implementations when you start talking about retail businesses and uh, delivery trucks you're talking about thousands and tens of thousands of locations and so the little bit of shaving of improvement that you can make at each of those locations multiplies very fast but also all of the locations are the same unlike when we start running in data centers where each of our data centers is going to be quite significantly different and run different sets of workloads when we're doing these these multiple locations that are essentially cookie cutters of one another we're getting we don't have to redevelop for each one so we are getting that benefit being multiplied across all of the locations in a way that we don't as much when we're working in data centers one of the biggest constraints that we have is support at the edge. I mean, you think about data center, you know, replacing a component, especially on the enterprise view of things, but actually at the edge, you don't have anybody most of the time. So you have somebody that maybe can replace and uh, unplug and plug a, a couple of, uh, you know, connectors, you know, and, and you have to hope that they are getting, you know, the right port and, and et cetera, et cetera. But that's what you can get most of the time. So it's easier to ship a new, uh, a new component and replace it, you know, if it's a box, than anything else. So everything changing in the way you you treat these devices, they uh, especially also uh, from the security point of view, why everything at the edge is encrypted? Because you know, again, you have to replace the component, not. And the component could be an entire server instead of thinking too much about repiling the server. It brings way more attention to how you automate the management and and provisioning of workloads, making sure that those um, that infrastructure is completely capable of being overseen remotely, because you're not going to be sending IT out to service this equipment. Um, readily. And then the other aspect that I think about is security. You are 
introducing a tremendous amount of additional attack points into your infrastructure. And I think that I've talked to some security companies who said that this is, you know, this is a, a nightmare in terms of creating a solution, a security solution that is going to be um, ensuring that you've got root of trust in everything that you're doing. Um, I think that that is going to be a topic that I'm really interested in hearing about this week. If, if the companies have something to talk about in terms of how they're looking at um, secure deployment of this technology and um, you know what their customers are requiring from them in terms of infrastructure security. And that security becomes really significant at, at the far edge where you don't actually have physical security. So it might be that it's a photo printing kiosk in a, in a department store and you don't have physical security. Somebody could relatively easily access that, that computer that's inside there and it'll be a fairly powerful computer connected to your network in order to do all of the work. There's a, there's a big security hassle around that. Um, some of these deployments are going to end up in places that are completely unstaffed and public access. And that's totally terrifying for the security team. So yeah, it's getting that, that root of trust that's not reliant on physical security of the endpoint is going to be very important. So without making this sound too much of an ad for Edge Field Day, I think that uh, we are definitely going to hear about a lot of these aspects, whether it's uh, the technology like hyperconvergence or um, you know, zero trust security, out of band management, uh, networking, you know, secure different uh, networking, uh, container deployment, all of these things are going to be coming up at Edge Field Day. And it's a wonderful field because it does encompass so many different topics. So I guess uh, let's get back to the premise, though, and, and wrap this up with, with, with your final thoughts. Uh, the Edge is not just the cloud or the data center, right, Enrico? No, it's not. And we will see more and more, you know, differences in the future because I, I think we are, uh, you know, just scratching the surface, as I said. So this is the first wave of implementation of a real edge because the technology is changing. We have many more opportunities and, uh, you know, there will be a lot of fun, new, interesting technologies coming in the next, you know, few years. Exciting. Edge, I think, is the most exciting area of technology innovation today. I think it needs to rely on cloud computing technologies to actually deliver the vision of what edge can be for companies, but it's completely different in terms of its implementation. I think one of the interesting things is going to be seeing that progression from Internet of Things devices that do one tiny thing extremely well through how they're being aggregated at, at the edge and then value is upstreaming through into the cloud. And so I think connectivity through this is going to be one of the really crucial things to, to look at as we're, we're viewing the Edge Field Day event this week. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's the things that I'm really excited about is to see how we're able to take existing technologies, whether it's Kubernetes or SD-WAN or uh, virtualization, and apply these in a way that addresses the unique challenges at the edge. So uh, please do check out the uh, Edge Field Day presentations, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Um, if you're listening to this after the publication date, you'll find those on YouTube as well. Um, before we go, uh, one more time, uh, tell us where we can find you and continue this conversation. Enrico? So you can find me on geekout.com. You, you can find there all the write-ups that uh, me and my team write about storage, about Kubernetes, and uh, all the other uh, reports from Geekout. Allison Klein at LinkedIn, at Tech Allison on Twitter, and of course at thetecharena.net. I'm Alistair Cook, and you can find me on Demitas, so and in New Zealand, so on Twitter as DemitasNZ, or my web website is demitas.co.nz, or if you just put Alistair Cook into Google and try and avoid the cricketer, you should be able to find me. And I'm Stephen Foskett, and you'll find me at S. Foskett on most social media networks, as well as here on the uh, on-premise podcast, as well as our Utilizing Tech podcast and our weekly Gishtalt IT News Rundown. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you enjoyed this discussion, please do subscribe, uh, whether it's in your favorite podcast application or on YouTube, uh, so you don't miss an episode. Uh, please do also give us a rating or a review on that platform, uh, since that does help to spread the word. 
This podcast was brought to you by gestaltit.com, your home for IT coverage from across the enterprise, as well as uh, techfieldday.com this episode. For show notes and more episodes, go to gestaltit.com slash podcast. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.